The real unemployment numbers do not reflect what you've been told. Want to know more? Well, you came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. I've got a really important video for you today. A lot to cover, so let's begin. Out of Reuters, millions of Americans locked out of unemployment system survey finds. Millions of Americans who have been thrown out of work have been unable to register for unemployment benefits since the U.S. economy entered freefall. Now, of course, this is based on a survey. We don't know everybody in the situation that they're dealing with, but we have seen this all throughout social media. We've seen different articles being written about it. We know that this is pervasive. One other point I want to mention here before I show you some more detail on this is the fact that there is a backlog. We know about the backlog. We've heard about this before. So essentially, there have been these claims that have been put in, but the processing of that takes time. When you've got millions of them coming in all at once, you can't put that through in an instant. So they're going through that paperwork. Maybe you could suggest it's being done on purpose to reduce the numbers. I don't really know. I'm not speculating. All I'm saying is that we know absolutely that there is in fact a backlog. So the number is higher than the 26 million that we've had up until this point. We're going to get the new numbers. Perhaps by the time you watch this video, those new numbers have come out. Regardless, at this time, 26 million unemployed people. And that does not represent reality. The reality seems like it could be a lot more. Up to 13.9 million Americans are out of work, but have not been able to register for unemployment benefits. Official stats show 26.5 million in the US have filed for unemployment benefits since March 15th. The poll found that for every 10 people who have successfully filed unemployment claims, three or four have been unable to register. Register. Now that's a big number. Two out of 10 people say they didn't apply because it was too difficult. Now, I'm not sure what they mean by too difficult exactly, but if it's anything like the small business loans, we heard a lot of complaints about that as well. Long lines have become a mainstay outside unemployment offices across the US as people look to file claims in person to avoid the overwhelmed online process. They're doing whatever they can to get their money. This is what we've come to now with the breakdown of the economy, this is being piled up on top of everything else that's underlying this system. Remember, we've got some serious issues going on. The debt has compounded to a rate people cannot deal with. They're putting everything on their credit cards. They're maximizing the debt that they're given. They take on the home equity line of credit. They have the personal loans. They've got every form of debt. When they stretch the payments on their car out six years, which is becoming very typical now, the payments are looking reasonable, but you're carrying that debt for six years. On top of that, you got maintenance on the vehicle, you've got gas, you've got insurance. All of these things are not considered in what people do when they spend all of this money. Guess what's going to happen in the future? Your expenses are going to go up. They're not going to go down. So everything becomes worse as time goes on because the situation is only exacerbated by the central bank and their policies. They print money out of thin air and they drive prices up, but they don't do so in a linear fashion. It's not as if they put $1 more into the system and that equates to, let's say, $1 more on your electricity bill. No, it doesn't work like that. They devalue the currency so it happens indirectly. You can't figure it out. It doesn't work that way. Here are the initial jobless claims, and you could see the median expectation is that this is continuing to decline. These are the official numbers in blue. That's what we're getting a total, of course, of about 26 million people unemployed. That doesn't include the people that really would love to be working a serious full-time position, but all they can get is part of the gig economy. Yes, they're underemployed, but they're not ending up on the staff that we would really like to see. Like I said, by the time you're watching this video, the numbers might be out. It should be somewhere around here. Regardless, it doesn't take into account how many people simply can't get into the system because of either a backlog or they're dealing with technical issues.
This is a Gallup poll, and you could see that the situation we're dealing with today, it disrupts 30% of Americans' jobs or finances. Now, that is a big number. So you've got people that have already been permanently laid off, whatever you want to call that. I call it being fired, but some people get offended. You've got individuals that are basically forced to stay home. You've got businesses, small businesses, medium businesses, that are completely shuttered at this moment here. Business owners owners don't know what to do. A large percentage of people have had their pay reduced and they say you can keep your job, but you're not going to make what you did before. Now, some people would say, well, fine, I'll take it because at least I have a job. But what happens to your expenses? Have they declined in the same way? Did the government just come around and reduce all the things that you buy? Of course not. It doesn't work like that. So in effect, you've lost a lot because the expenses continue to rise. Your income goes down and we enter the same cycle over and over again. This is how it works with the top end of the spectrum, if you want to look at it that way, the highest income earners, but more specifically when we look at it, the 0.001% of people, these individuals become more and more wealthy, more money funnels into them and it moves away from the average person. The middle classes evaporate the big establishments get the bailouts. I have seen so many people comment about this on my channel, talking about what they are dealing with or people they know that they're dealing with. All of the information I'm getting from these different polls, from these different surveys is also coming up directly to me. So I want to extend thank you to everybody who's been informing, not just me, but everybody that comes to the channel. The comment section on this channel is fantastic. Of course, there's a bunch of nonsense. But there are so many informed people, really helpful people that put the information that they have inside information into the comments. So I learn a lot as people give their own insights. Thank you for that. When Congress gave the Federal Reserve $750 billion of emergency firepower to backstop the country's biggest company, some lawmakers insisted on inserting a clause that now threatens to undermine the program and could pose a major problem if the markets go haywire again. We have a little bit of nonsense here, and I wanted to talk about it briefly. Under the stimulus bill that was passed last month, the central bank is wading into corporate credit markets for the first time since the 1950s. One Fed facility will lend directly to companies and another will buy bonds in the secondary market. Yet the legislation also imposed the key condition. Only a borrower with significant operations in and a majority of its employees based in the US is eligible for Fed support. But of course, they don't know this information. They're not going to necessarily become suddenly verbal with all of it if it means that their companies aren't going to get the bailouts. Of course, this is the way it works. They try to put this information in here to make it seem like, oh, they're doing everything to make sure that they're not wasting your precious money, but it doesn't work like that. You've got savings in the bank. They're screwing you over every single day. They try to make it seem as if, well, we had to bail out the financial industry. What did you want? The banks to fail? You'd lose all your deposits and other things like this. They tell you nonsense because the average person doesn't know what's going on and they'll believe whatever they're told. Sounds real, doesn't it? I thought this was interesting because now a majority of analysts believe that the Federal Reserve is going to cut rates again. Let's see what happens. By the time you watch this video, we may have already seen this news. It is a high percentage believing that they're going to go in this direction. I'm not sure that's the case, but obviously I'm going to talk about it in my next video, so stay tuned. And another bit of ridiculousness, Treasury Secretary Stephen Munchkin said the states that had poorly managed budgets before the situation we are encountering today sent their economies reeling should not be rescued by the federal government. This isn't just going to be a federal bailout of the states. They talk the talk, but they never walk the walk. This is the way that it happens every single time. They tell you one thing and behind closed doors, a whole different set of information becomes reality. 
If you follow the yellow brick road and find a little munchkin, you'll find this quote. I would say that's highly unlikely the Federal Reserve starts buying stocks. Well, we'll see what happens, as of right now they're technically indirectly buying stocks because they are buying the ETFs. It's a very, very limited set, but they're technically already doing it. The expectation right now today is that the US will need to spend trillions more as economy takes until 2022 to fully recover. The stock market might recover long before that. Right now, the median stock, the last time I checked, so the last week's numbers, median stock was down something like 28%. Yes, your Amazon stock has done a lot better. If you have seven shares, you're getting closer to that 1 million mark. But when you look at what's going on in the economy itself, it can't just flip a switch, turns back on, and everything's good. There are serious problems ahead. Many of the financial institutions are really seeing the impact already. And think about it, they are not the issue front and center, but they're going to be dealing with some major problems as people start to default, as the companies start to default, as you run into the issues with the derivatives and the corporate debt. That's why the Federal Reserve and other central banks around the world have really stepped up their game in purchasing all that corporate debt because they know it's going to be flushed down the toilet. HSBC slashed its first First quarter profit in half after reserves for bad loans surged five-fold, prompting Europe's largest bank to deliver a stark warning on the deep and lasting impact of the situation on the financial sector. You can look at the details for yourself. They are talking about massive pressure on their company. That's one bank alone, HSBC. They're all encountering the same problems right now. Really quickly, just an update, all of the different Fed surveys and related indexes, each one of these has been just destroyed as we expect. When you look at all of the different shipping indicators, the PMIs, any sort of business conditions index, all of them are down, but that was largely expected. And here you can see a little bit of humor because, you know, if you come to the channel often, I do enjoy a laugh on occasion. The S&P 500 has moved up considerably while we have seen consumer confidence basically fall through the floor. Now, this statistic here isn't exactly black and white. There's a lot to that because people have been purchasing certain things to a great degree, but they have gone away in general from the spending that they were doing before. Just look at the automotive industry as one example. They're kind of just waiting and seeing. Let me take a breather. I might be out of a job here, so I got to watch out what I do. So certain industries are dealing with this better than others. That's all for this video. If you found that informative, hit that thumbs up button. When you do, you are supporting me. I want to thank you for that. Simply clicking one button helps to push this video higher up in the search rankings. So I want to thank you for doing that. If you want to see me on Instagram and on Twitter and on basically any other platform, you can do so by searching The Money GPS. Online sales have gone up significantly just in the last couple months. Those who had businesses operating already have been benefiting from this. I created this free e-course to teach people how to make some money on the side or potentially even more. It's been out for several months. It is absolutely relevant today. I get into all of the details you need to know. And best of all, it's free. The AmazonGPS.com. If you want to dig deep into the financial system, there's a lot of stuff in there and most of it is garbage. So what I did was I created these two books, which made it all simple. I've gotten so many positive reviews from people through my channel, emails, everything. They're letting me know they wish they would have read this earlier. I want to thank you for those comments. It really, really does mean a lot to me. So thank you very much. If you haven't read it already, either one of the books, check them out at the link in the description if you want the audiobook, themoneygps.com. Hang on a second, don't go anywhere. Where do you think you're going? You haven't watched this video yet? Don't click off, you need to watch it. Watch it at 2x speed if you have to. Click on it, I'll see you there.